Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Creative Imperative. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So tell us your name, what your art form is, where you live, and if you're adventurous, how old you are. Okay, uh, I'm Nicole Zonlicker. Um, I write mostly fiction, um, some some nonfiction, some poetry. Um, I the next one was where where I am. Yes. I, um, I'm I'm currently in Brooklyn, and I am 25. Okay, great. And just briefly, how are you doing with the pandemic? Are you safe? Are you are you um, not going insane, going insane? Yeah, um, I've been pretty okay. It's, you know, it's hard to watch the numbers go up and, you know, hard because folks are struggling. Um, for, for myself, I'm very introverted. So I'm, I'm very happy to hang out inside and write and pet my cat. Super. Writing does that, right? You know, yeah. it really, it, it, grounds, it grounds one. For okay, sure. so I'm thrilled that you're going to participate in the creative imperative and I'm going to ask you three questions okay mm -hmm. okay the first question is name something it can be in your field such as a novel or some piece of uh, writing it can be okay. artwork music something that has greatly influenced your creative life yeah um I would say the first thing that comes to mind is The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood um, she's one of my favorite authors and that, that was the first book of hers I've, I've read. Um, but it's, it's just very intricate and the way she writes is very beautiful. And I think that book kind of, um, you know, spoke to me when I, when I first read it. So I think that that's been a big influence in a lot of my work. Wonderful. And do you, do you use it as a template in any sort of very vague, you know, distance way for your own writing? Her, yeah, her writing, um, that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I consciously use it as a template, but I'll find myself like, oh, that's, you know, that's very Margaret-esque or, um, you know, thinking about uh, how I want to, to maybe tell a story within a story. I'll go back to The Blind Assassin because that's kind of a big theme in, in that book. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, definitely, definitely something that if not at the forefront of my mind is, is there. Right. It's, it's backstory in your brain, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we all experience a sense of flow when we're writing. You mm -hmm. know, I'm a writer also, but in yes. other art forms as well. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you can describe to us, um, what does it feel like when you're writing and things are going very well in the sense that not just the words are coming out well, mm -hmm. but that you you know, I'm putting words in your mouth, you might feel a, a certain sense of disembodiment. Like, mm -hmm. where is this coming from? It's coming through okay. you from somewhere else. Have you experienced it? And can you describe that for us? Yeah, um, I'll do my best to, to describe that <laughs> that feeling. But um, yeah, I think a lot of the times, you know, I'm, I'm writing, and especially when it's fiction, you know, the characters will just kind of start to, to take on lives of their own. And um, you know, start to kind of do their own thing. And I, as the author, I'm, I'm just there, you know, kind of uh, conducting that onto the onto the page. Um, a lot of it is just, you know, my brain won't let me relax until I, I get this onto the paper. So um, I guess it's cathartic. Um, I definitely get lost in it. Just this morning, I wasn't, I wasn't even writing, I was editing um, a piece and realized three hours had gone by. <laughs> and, um, that's wonderful I, yeah. when that yeah. happens. It's like the time yeah. flies. And sure. uh, are you aware sometimes, you know, when your characters take over, perhaps they mm -hmm. might start st saying something that you're not expecting. Yeah. Do you feel anything in the body with that? Does does it manifest in the body at all? It may not, it might not, yeah. but I'm curious. I don't know that it, I'm, I, I don't know that it necessarily manifests in the body. I think I'm more aware of it um, in, you know, a headspace, like, you know, I'll, I'll come out of it for a second and be like, oh, where did that come from? Oh, um, and I realize it's, you know, that that's just kind of the direction yeah, yeah. Um, the story wants to take. Right. Oh, it's such a, it's such a, um, we're lucky, right? To be yeah. able to experience that. For sure. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the last question for the creative imperative is what does the world need to know about writing? Why is writing important? Mm -hmm. Try yeah. to tell the world why they need to read, why, why writers need to be supported, why <laughs> books are important, all that good stuff. Why? Yeah, I think for me, writing is important 
because it holds a lot of truth about the world. Um, I was reading um, a series of poems the other night by um, Denez Smith, who um, is a, a pretty young poet. I believe they have one or two books out, um, but I, you know, just read it and just felt like the, the emotion in my body, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a way to communicate. It's a way to tell truth. Um, and it's just, um, you know, a way, I guess, to, to celebrate life to an extent. Um, so yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. That's great. Well, yeah. we know that you have a book coming out. It's coming yes. out on February 20th. It's called Letters I'll Never Send. Yes. It's a work of fiction. Mm -hmm. And I would love to hear, you know, what the book is about and um, just just sell sell that baby to me. Yeah, so uh, this is this is the book. Um, it's, um, yeah. It. <laughs> it's, um... Yeah, so it's it's fiction. Um, it's about a woman who, um, after eight months in the psych hospital for um, attempted suicide, she comes out um, and is just kind of trying to readjust uh, to the world and, um, you know, figure out what, you know, how, how to cope with the loss that kind of put her in that dark place in the first place and try to figure out how to, um, with everything that's going on in her life now, um, you know, deal with, with just life in general in, in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of a, a summary. Um, so far folks have been really, you know, receptive to it. The couple of people that have gotten to read it early. Um, I think a lot of folks feel seen in it, um, which makes me feel really good, honestly. Yes. Um, yes. so yeah, it's been a really cool process to hear back from folks and right. Yeah. You've gotten some wonderful advanced mm -hmm. praise on this book. Um, yeah, wonderful writers, you know, a lot of snazzy authors in there. Mm -hmm. And that's fabulous. Let me ask you, um, what was the inspiration for writing about such a such a what could be a somber plot, but is, of course, you know, could be deeply fertile is yeah. I'm sure deep, deeply fertile in how you manage um, this, this subject. Do you have an inspiration? Or is it strictly from the back of your mind? Um, it is a lot about, you know, um, I went into the psych hospital for suicidal ideation when I was 14. Mm -hmm. Um, so a while ago now, um, but I think it's just not something that people talk about or write about. And so part of that was me, um, wanting to, to put my voice out there and, um, yeah. And then the, there's a lot of it also that, you know, characters that just, um, some some that resemble um people i know and you know for good or for bad and some that i just kind of came out of my brain and and worked their way in the story so uh, it's it's based around you know real experiences and and wanting to talk about mental health and stigma but also um very much fiction as well right right well it's a really important subject and one that is not comfortable a lot to talk about. And I'm yeah. sure that, you know, the authority that you bring to it um, with your own experience, which of mm -hmm. course is devastating. Um, you know, I would look, I would encourage anyone to buy the book and read the book and I will too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thrilled that, so this isn't your first book though, right? No, this is, this is my third. Um, Fantastic. So first, oh my yeah. My, my first, this book was nonfiction, um, and then my my second was short stories, and so this is my first novel. Um, Wonderful, but my third book. Wonderful, you're so young. I mean, I didn't start writing until <laughs> I was, you know, I'm 66. I started writing like eight years ago, so yeah. I, I only have a few more good years left in me. But you have your whole life. I don't think that's true. Oh wow, well, you never know. <laughs> um, but uh, Nicole, thank you mm -hmm. so much for spending time with us. And I'll, um, yeah. I'm sure that everybody's going to be interested in seeing this interview and, um, thank you for sharing your creative imperative. It's very important for us to hear. Yeah. Thank you okay. so much for having me. My, yeah. my pleasure. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye.